Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be a Phillies check-in heading into the Chicago Cubs series that starts tonight at Citizens Bank Park. So let's give some keys to why the Phillies, instead of being on the outside looking in, could be actually the team that's in front and not on the outside looking in. Numero uno is obviously that big kahuna, the most blown saves in franchise history at 30 blown saves. Yes, 30. That is a remarkable number, blown save. Like anybody has stated, it's just the obvious, um, blow 10 less of those saves, and you're in a much better spot. You're a couple games ahead, blow 15 less of those saves, you're really in a good spot. So even if you had 15 blown saves, or 20, which is still a remarkably bad number, you would actually be in a good spot. It's just that's how damning the back end of the Phillies bullpen has been for them. Hector Neera should be re-signed, don't get me wrong, because he's found, other than last game, he's found a planning spot for himself, it seems like, being in a role that he just pitches wherever the most grueling spot is, not as the closer role. Because it seems like he's more loose using his fastball, using his other pitches there. He shouldn't have used the slider the other day as his third pitch. But it's helping him big time, and that was his only bad outing really since moving there. So you got to put people in their place. Ian Kennedy has closed well this year for Kansas City. That's the key. He's never closed in a big trying to win the division or trying to get to a wild card situation. You want to know why? Because he just became a reliever in 2019. It was a good pickup for this year. Don't get me wrong by Dombrowski because it's the only pickup you were really able to do. But that's because Glenn Tag and the people the former that were in management, whoever our assistant GM was at that time, were not able to bring in people that developed or would become closers or would bring in an actual lockdown closer. Ian Kennedy's all right, but he's not really a closer. He's just an overall relief pitcher, just like Hector's just an overall relief pitcher. He shouldn't really be a major league closer. He just started relieving a couple years ago. So that's one of the keys. They don't have the best put-together bullpen. The second key is defense. The defense is supposed to be, it's like how New York Giants fans, obviously I ain't one, you can tell by my room, I love the Eagles, I just put out a video on the Eagles, but how New York F Giants fans have been promised by Dan Gettleman to be able to get an offensive line. You want to know what they haven't got? An offensive line. You want to know what we have been promised to get as Phillies fans for the past couple of years, other than better pitching, which is another key that I'm going to get to that's still with the rotation and not just the bullpen in the next one. We have been promised to get better defense. Our defensive numbers have not really improved very much at all, actually. So defense is another key. You can't be losing games because of multitudes of earned runs. That ain't going to help you when you also have the most blown saves in franchise history. Maybe if you had one or the other, you would have been in a better spot too because we blown games on defense rather than just blowing them at the back end as well. So that's something you need to fix. The next thing is, before we get into talking about this series, is a two-part. It's you have to beat the worst teams. The Phillies play down to the worst opponents. They lost both series to the Rockies this year. You cannot lose both series to a team like the Rockies. They're good at home, but they made the Rockies look like the home Rockies on the road. And they ain't that good on the road. And the other key is our pitching staff is why we make teams look better at times. You have Nola struggling this year. Nobody saw that coming, so I can excuse that. Obviously, that's not on the team. You have Wheeler pitching like an ace. You have Ranger stepping in doing really well. And Kyle Gibby Gibson's doing all right. But you still, other than... At the back end, you were able to pick up pitching, but the whole first half of the season, you had no bottom two starters. And then Noah wasn't even doing that well, so at times you really only had Zach Wheeler in your rotation. That was actually a carrying weight. Now you brought in Ranger Suarez, now you brought in Gibson, so you really have three guys now since Noah was still struggling majorly. Which, again, they couldn't predict that, but before the season, you would have wanted to have more guys depth-wise. Ranger Suarez developed out and I think surprised people with what he was really able to come into being a starter and how good his success is here as a starter, also keeping that ERA down. 
we all know he's a great pitcher that's going to attack people, but come on, I don't think anybody expected him to still keep his ERA in the ones and be this successful as a starter, just starting moving from the bullpen to a starter. So that's really helped us. But in the first half, you didn't have that. It was literally just Zach Wheeler. The Phillies brought in the guys like the Matt Moores of the world, the Chase Andersons. They could have brought in better pitchers in the offseason to solidify the bottom half of that rotation rather than waiting for Suarez to develop into a starter and waiting to get Kyle Gibson at the deadline. So that's something they done goofed on again. And then the hitting, the Reese Hoskins, we just see is a bigger part of the lineup than people make him out to be. He's one of the underrated guys here. Since he's been out of the lineup, there has been more of an effect than Bryce Harper without Reese in the lineup, who's one of our bigger RBI guys, really has been the major carrying weight of the offense. And then Andrew McCutcheon has been chipping in good otherwise as well. Not batting average-wise, but RBI and home run-wise, he's definitely had a pretty good season himself over there. Kutch and then Gene Segura as well. Those have been the only guys that have had some consistency other than Bryce Harper in the offense. JT's had a down year. He had a good day the other day, but in a losing effort. So now to round out this video. Um, let's get into the Chicago Cubs series. This is another team that the Phillies cannot play down to. The Cubs are not as good as the Phillies. The Cubs are coming in at 65 and 79. The Phillies are one game above 500 at 72 and 71. And as we said at the beginning of this video, should be way better than that if they didn't blow as many saves and have a putrid defense. So, in order to do better in this series, the Phillies are going to have to just play to the opponent, play to your strengths. I am a little bit concerned, I ain't going to lie, in Game 1, because Adrian Sampson has bad overall MLB stats. You want to know what he doesn't have bad this year? This year MLB stats, and the Phillies don't know him. And he's pitched good in two starts this year. He's 0-2, but has a 2.20 ERA. So guys the Phillies don't know and have much experience with that are having solid seasons don't usually mix well. So I'm not going to lie, that does concern me a little bit. But we got Gibson going with his... 10-6 and six record, and a 3-3-8 ERA. So hopefully he'll be able to man the fort and we'll be able to get enough offense. The offense has been pretty dry lately. So hopefully the offense will be able to turn up again and we'll be able to score some runs. When it comes to the second game of the series, that is the boy Suarez that we were just talking about who should not be 6-4. and four. He should be much better than that, but the team just can't win any damn games. He has a 1-3-8 ERA and is 6-4. and four. Um, and then you have against Alec Mills, who's just a good, another guy that's not afraid of him, but he's just going to let you try to hit the ball against him. 6-6 uh, six and six with a 4-3-5 ERA, so a solid bottom of the rotation numbers. But I feel like the Phillies with their hitters, if they can time him and get to him, they should be able to hit him. So I hope that they can do what they're just supposed to do if your name is not Bryce Harper, your name is not Gene Segura, your name is not Andrew McCutcheon, as we mentioned earlier. And then also some young guys that have tripped in at different times this year. Matt Veerling is the current guy. We had Maton do it earlier. Obviously, they haven't been consistent throughout the year. Williams do it at times. You had different young guys help out at different times, and that's helpful as well. But you need to have your actual key guys step up, and only three of them really have. So we need to just play this team how you expect to play this team. And you need to play them like you are the better team. The Phillies seem to play down to opponent and then look like they're the much worse team when in hindsight, they have a much better filled out roster than the Rockies, and obviously a much better filled out roster than the Cubs, because the Cubs got rid of everybody. They don't even have that Trevor Story-esque guy on their team anymore. So the Phillies just need to play up to their opponent and get it done. Now, the final game of the series is Kyle Hendricks against TBD now. I wonder what they'll do there, if that'll be a bullpen game to put somebody else in there on maybe a little bit less rest, or actually it wouldn't be on less rest because we had a day off, so I'm assuming they put somebody else in there. Right now, Thursday's TBD. They also called up Medina, so I wonder if they did that as a caveat in this video to round it out because they think that, um, because they believe that um, Medina's going to be able to start for them rather than have other people um, just keep doing the one-by-one -one bullpen inning thing, which is really not a good idea. I'm sorry, the app just freaked out, so I had to go back real quick. And then after this series, which I'll get to later in the week when I do a video, this one's about 10 minutes long. The next one will probably be a little bit shorter because it won't have those keys to why the whole rest of the season was a failure to now to not be able to be the ones that are actually ahead in the division and not the ones looking down and trying to catch up is against the Mets, which is a division opponent, so you know that's going to bring extra energy. But in this one, you got to try to create your own energy. The Phillies have not been able to do that all season. When they play in stadiums that are boring, that are bland, that don't have a lot of fans, create your own damn energy. I mean, you got to be able to do it. You're a professional baseball team. It's like Harper said, it's been embarrassing at times. Do it. Create your own energy. 
there's not going to be probably the most lively crowd because you're playing the freaking Cubs. They're not that great, and it's during the middle of the week. So you're going to have to create your own energy, and you haven't been playing good baseball lately. So those three things combined, you usually bring a lot of people down to the house when they got work the next day, and that's understandable. So you got to bring your own energy and win these damn games in this series, and then guess what's going to happen? You're going to have that lively crowd. You're going to have that energy there on top of the energy you create yourself on the weekend because you're playing the Mets, and people will travel. Yes, it's away, but people will travel to City Field in New York, which is only a couple hours away. If you do great this series and put yourself in a great position for the vision. So it's on you, Phillies. Do it. Uh, create your own energy, and then the fans will bring more of that energy that you all want. Peace out, everybody. This is Percent News. I'm Joe Boric. Have a great and safe day. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Peace out.